Hello, we're team number two, and today we'll be doing a lesson on mean and standard deviation, and we'll be tying it to Mexican-American immigration in the U.S. I'm in charge of the engaged portion of this lesson. The culturally relevant aspects of this portion are a brief review of the student's family history, as well as an introduction to Mexican-American history. We'll be discussing the Bracero program and the Mexican repatriation of 1929, as well as the effects that these two pieces of legislation had on the Chicano history. Hello everybody, my name is Alexis Ivan Garcia. My section is the Explore part of the lesson. In this section, students are introduced to mean and standard deviation. The lesson focuses on defining, explaining, and applying to a real world scenario. This application involves the immigration data from the Bracetos program from the years 1920 to 1929. This is a very impo important culturally relevant application, especially for our people here in the region of Texas. This application will also show for many of our students the pride and joy of their ancestors that came from Mexico. Uh, hello class, my name is Sylvia Perez and I'm in charge of the explain problems. Um, I have decided to separate them into three categories. The first problem uh, has the students divided into groups of six to seven. Uh, why? Well, because when they work in groups, they learn from each other and they're practicing cooperative learning, which goes hand in hand with culturally relevant uh, structure. And uh, they also get to hear each other's ideas and they engage in platica and they do math talk. As well, they get to form uh, social relationships with students from diverse communities or within the same community. Uh, and then the second problem talks about the theme of our lesson, which is immigration. I actually included concrete information from reliable sources and uh, it, it has a table and a list of immigrants residing in the state of Texas from the years 2005 to the years 2015. And the students have to find the mean and the standard deviation in a group, like I mentioned earlier. And why is this important? Well, because immigration is a social issue that is related to most of us here in the Valley. and it's something that's going to engage the students uh, and they're probably going to work in it a little bit more involved. And then the, the third problem talks about what we all like, food. It, it gives examples of um, flautas and tacos and, and all that and to make it culturally relevant other than the food, I talked about platillos, I included the language that we all know because instead of saying um, oh, dishes or the plates, I use the language that if we go to a Mexican restaurant, we'll say, oh, it's a platillo. And uh, that's how I thought it would be meaningful to the students because I'm providing familiar experiences and I'm providing the language that we know. And it will be fun talking about food. Hello, my name is Frankie J. Nons and I will be focusing on the elaboration part of the lesson. This section will, student, will show students real life examples, expand their skills in mean and standard deviation in the real world. We will be using data from the Bracero program that we have mentioned earlier on in the lesson. The difference now is that we will talk about male and female wages alongside immigration. Students will be able to observe the data, make assumptions, and notice patterns. We will discuss how this can affect us in our region of Texas since we are so close to the border. This will wrap up our dis entire discussion where we will have successfully accomplished our lesson on standard deviation and mean with immigration and gender awareness. Hello class. So today we're going to be talking about a little bit about uh, Mexican-American history. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to think about a relative or somebody that we know uh, that was a farm worker in uh, um, the 1920s, 1930s, so that could be, you know, a grandparent or a great-grandparent or el abuelito del primo, de, I don't know. So somebody that you know for sure worked as a farm worker uh, during those decades and in, in the United States. And when you're thinking about that person, I want you to think also about these three questions. Where were they born? Uh, if they were born in another country, did they stay here? And do you hear stories about them or from them if they're still alive? And uh, while you're thinking about that, I want to tell you about who I'm thinking about. So my great grandpa, uh, he was actually born in Mexico and in the 1920s through the Bracero program, which was an initiative to bring uh, Mexican American farm workers, I'm sorry, just Mexican farm workers uh, into the country, have them work and then 
leave you know just get a, a get paid and then leave but it was not an immigration policy so he was actually working here uh, through that program and he met my uh, great-grandma you know they they got together and they had three kids here in the United States so actually my grandma was born in the United States now in the 19 uh, 1929 uh, you know you remember from your history uh, there was a great depression in this country so the first people that were cut off were Mexican American farm workers you know this these were people that were treated as uh, immigrants when most of them had already been living here for a decade most of them had already married many of them had already married into uh, an, an American family and became citizens but uh, you had this a, a lot of uh, racism and xenophobia and so this Mexican repatriation was an executive order to send all these Mexican American farm workers uh, that were then considered just Mexican farm workers back to Mexico you know like there were big signs on the street and so uh, my great-grandpa he's he was like you know I was I don't like it here uh, we're just gonna take her things and leave so they left he didn't even register my grandma and he never came back to the United States and so I want you to think uh, whether that person stayed or did they leave uh, did that what was that uh, the person the reason was that person the reason why you're here today and the reason why this is relevant is because um, we see this issue repeat repeated today we see a lot of parallels from last century especially these these past decades uh, that we see that um, far, immigrants are considered a, an invasion and I want you to know what you think uh, whether it, uh, immigration enriches a country or it's just a, you know people taking away jobs, people invading with culture, uh, trying to impose their culture into a society. Uh, now, once you once you're done with that, once you have a quick uh, quick write about the person you're talking about, we're gonna look uh, we're gonna look to this um, these data this data and uh, so these are the years um, from 1920 to 1930 um, and so each each year has the the amount of immigrants that are approximately that were approximately in this country so I want you to tell me what you notice about this um, these da this data and you should be able to see that in the in the last years uh, there was a decrease. Uh, there was a um, the, 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 year, the numbers are decreasing. There was a there's a huge difference between 1930 and 1931. Uh, the, the reason why this this is like this is um, because of the Mexican repatriation. As I said before, uh, there was a big effort to send people back to to Mexico. Um, and I want you to write down how this affected those farm workers and how this affected the country. You think, was it, was it a good idea to send all those farm workers back to Mexico uh, during the Great Depression? Or was it a bi bad idea to send them? Do you think they could have helped the, the situation? And so more analysis on this graph will be done by our teammate, Ivan Garcia. Thank you, Luis. Okay, class, now we're going to look at the mathematical concept of this whole lesson. We're going, about, we're going to talk about mean and standard deviation. So we first have to know what mean is. Mean is the average value in a given list. The notation for it is x with a little bar on top. When to use mean? You use mean when the sample, is, uh, when the sample size is large and there are, no, there are no outliers. We're going to be using the example that Luis was talking about, the Bracero program, in which we have a data right over here. We're going to use the first 10 values of the, from 1920 to 1931. After 1929, there was a Mexican repatriation and the, uh, due to the Great Depression, in which uh, Mexican farm workers had to go back to Mexico. So those would be considered outliers because they were very low in the United States. So this provides, the, the mean provides a better measurement of central tendency. So now let's talk about the formula. To find out the average number of immigrants coming to the United States, with the Bracero program, we will use the following formula. The average, or the mean, equals the summation from i equals 1 to n, 
xi, where xi are the values inside the list. And n would be the total number of values in that list. So now let's talk about the example in a more mathematical way. In this, the next section we will cover the, the explaining of the mathematical concept, but for now, we're just going to look at it conceptually. So we have the first number of the data, which is 51,042. We're going to add all the data, all the values of the given data, all the way from the beginning to the end, where you have 38,980. And then that whole value, it's going to be divided by the number of the total number of, of values on that list, which will be 10. So I did the calculation for you, but don't worry, you'll get to practice a little bit more. So it's 487,775 over 10, which round off is 487,780. All right, so now that we found the mean, let's talk about standard deviation. So what does standard deviation mean? Standard deviation is a number you use to tell how measurements for a group are spread out from the average or expected value. So the notation for standard deviation is sigma. So when do we use standard deviation? You use standard deviation when you want to measure the distance between points. A high, uh, a high standard deviation means that the numbers are spread out. A low standard deviation means that the numbers are very close to the average. So now the formula for standard deviation is as follows. So sigma, of course, the notation, equals, and then we have a giant square root over all this. And so we're going to focus on the top first. So the top is the summation starting from i equals 1 to n, when n is the total number of values in the list. And then in parentheses, we have the value of the list. So you're going to go one by one. And you're going to subtract the mean. So and then after you do all that, you're going to square root it. So once you find those values, which is as shown right here, you're going to find from the very first one up to the last one, you're going to put that over, and then it's going to be n minus 1. Why are we using n minus 1 and not n? The reason we're doing that is to be unbiased. So then you're going to have n, which is 10. 10 minus 1 is going to be 9. So then sigma equals the square root of 42,432,327, which if we round off, it's going to give you 6,500. Uh, I'm sorry, 6,514. So now that we know how to find, we know that we know what mean is, we know what standard deviation is, we know the formulas for both of them, we know the notation, we know when to use them. Now I'm going to pass you on to Sylvia, that she's going to do, uh, she's going to be able to explain a couple of the problems a little bit more.